thing of uh, real estate parcels, which are owned by those business entities. So it took months for uh, my colleagues, Nick Penzen Stadler, John Kelly and I, uh, to uh, essentially reference uh, real estate data from New York to California um, and find all of the parcels of real estate which are owned by those companies. And as you pointed out, it's uh, hundreds of uh, hundreds of properties uh, worth uh, uh, more than $250 million. And it's a just totally unprecedented and uh, exceptional situation for the president to uh, be tied to that much uh, active real estate. And, the, and to that last point there, the, the, the newsworthy, newsworthiness here um, is really uh, about the fact that these properties by and large are for rent or for sale right now and simultaneously the president is in a position to personally benefit from the sale or from rental income from these properties so if somebody did want to funnel money to the president as a, as a bribe or to funnel money to the president to get his, get his attention for some reason um, this is a pretty direct way to do that Exactly. Many of these properties are, are on the market. They're kind of sold in a, on a staggering basis. They're not all for sale right now, but some are. And it presents the opportunity. Anyone uh, or any organization uh, can set up a shell company, uh, which would conceal their identities and make purchases. And even if these purchases are made at market rate, it's still a transaction that still benefits uh, the president. Uh, if you remember, President Trump set up a trust uh however that's not a bond trust it's a revocable trust uh, he is the sole beneficiary of that trust and he can withdraw funds at any time uh, so it's kind of going through a maze the the uh the funds before it reaches the president but it still uh has the same destination and the, the thread tying together uh, this reporting from you and your colleagues today and your reporting from last month that was cited by the house oversight committee today is that there don't seem to be any real protections on uh preventing the, the the people who are giving the president money by this means uh, by, by preventing it from being foreign officials or foreign governments. Uh, obviously, there's no direct evidence that we've got the government of China or Kazakhstan or something funding him, uh, funneling him money in this way. But uh, it seems clear both from the hotel story and from this case that there are protections to stop him from uh, being influenced by foreign entities through these processes, right? That's correct. Uh, last month, we asked the Trump Organization about the mechanics of how they find out whether uh, someone who's staying at a Trump hotel is paying for that stay with foreign government money. Uh, we were told there was a policy. We were not allowed to see the policy. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what the House Oversight Committee is uh, currently looking at. And hopefully that will uh, you know, be aired before the, before the public once they get the documents. Um, but the, the root of both situations is that foreign governments uh, can conceal their identities or any foreign uh, uh, person can set up a shell company and uh, do business with the president's companies essentially uh, in secret from the American public. Which is utterly, totally, completely unprecedented um, in American history. Steve Riley, investigative reporter for USA Today. Uh, congratulations to you and your colleagues for having done this work and produced such a cogent um, pressy of what you found. It's really, really important work.